Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about February 25th League of Legends DFS slate. Um, it's a five game slate uh, with three games in China and two games in Korea. So, yeah, it's it's an exciting uh, slate. It's another Friday night slate. So we have a fully loaded slate. So, you know, we have a lot. Um, we have few like one sided matchups and few closer matchups. And I have a pretty good uh, sense of, you know, on, on, on our match predictions. So yeah, let's continue our hot streak from yesterday. Just a quick recap. Um, we had a pretty good day yesterday, um, just cashing, but still nothing, no takedown or anything. Um, <laughs> it was a rare slate this morning that, uh, the LCK team uh, LCK, uh, teams perform better uh, then the L LPL Chinese uh, teams um, that ended up winning the games. So it was really, I think, DK, D plus Kia, and Genji stack that took it down with the support captain. So, like, that, you know, that does not happen often. For, so, obviously, for those people who played that, kudos to you. So that that's really great. That, that's definitely low-owned, you know, using primary stack and secondary stack, both from LCK teams and players. And so, yeah, good for you. That's that's great. Um, but nonetheless, we were pretty good on the match predictions. Unfortunately, Rare Adam didn't come off, um, you know, the strong performance after game one. They, you know, went down and ended up losing one to two in the series. Um, but I think it was a good call still. I think they dominated that game one. Um, they just had a bad coaching and draft and picks and bans and all that as well in game three. So that unfortunately cost them the game. But, you know, I think it was still nonetheless a pretty good pick by us. Uh, good process. I think we need to stick to the process. I think it's been working overall for, you know, for the duration of the spring split so far. So I just want to make sure that, you know, we kind of make some tweaks here and there, but nothing major. So because it's been working. If you like our videos, please, please hit the like button below. It would just mean so much to us. Um, it keeps me going, keeps me motivated. Um, I think we've been averaging 20 to 30 likes the last couple of videos. And it means a lot really to me and to, to the True DFS channel uh, to keep me going, you know, for free um, on these videos. Please hit the like button. Um, all right, LPL, let's dive into this matchup these matchups um rng versus thunder talk rng has probably been the most disappointing team um i think the name value carries a lot more uh significantly for this team than ever because they they've just been really putrid they've been really bad um they're going up against thunder talk who's been pretty bad as well but i actually think thunder talk can pull this off i mean you see rng starting the same five and Thunder Talk starting the same five. I'm a little worried about the bottom lane for Thunder Talk, um, but Beichuan and Yukal actually have been playing and performing better than Wei and Angel, as surprising as that sounds. Um, so I do think Thunder Talk definitely has a good shot of upsetting RNG just based on looking at these rosters. We'll look at the metrics here in a second, but Hoya actually has been so up and down. I mean, he looked great against the Shy the other day, I think a couple of weeks ago, but he just looked horrible in that last series, you know, the the one that they lost. Um, so we'll see how they how he fares against Breathe, but Breathe has been okay as well. RNG as an overall team has been okay. Um, I, I just feel like they have so much potential with this lineup, but it just seems like RNG has been so bad. Um, so yeah, do you think do I think Thunder Talk can win this? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you look at the metrics here, um, jungle control percentage and gold spend percentage difference and the earned golds per minute jungle difference between Beichuan and Wei. I mentioned that Beichuan looked better than Wei, you know, just based on our eye test, but it's actually true looking at the metric as well. There are there are a lot more metrics that favor Thunder Talk um, winning this matchup. So, you know, just based on the eye test and all that and also the metrics, I think I'm going to go Thunder Talk upsetting over RNG today. Um, but obviously, you can play RNG as well. 
I mean, this is more of a 55, 45 lean that I have, I think, on Thunder Talk, upsetting RNG today just based on, you know, the analysis that I just provided. Um, in terms of kill upside, over, under, and combined kills per minute, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty good matchup to target, but overall, pretty good, good, good matchup to target, but it's not as good as the other two LPL matchups. So I do think this is probably going to be the lowest owned pieces from RNG and Thunder Talk amongst the Chinese matchups, I think. I mean, you would think that EDG in the next matchup will talk about, you know, being the biggest favorite. You know, a lot of people are going to stack them. And then you see the JDG, TES, the ultimate <laughs> um, kill upside matchup here at 25.5 and 0.85 combined kills per minute. You see that a lot of people are going to want to play TES or JDG in their lineup. So I do think that's that that you know that in itself you know, just based on the game theory i think in itself makes rng and thunder talk very interesting to to play for um gpp purposes yeah but and i'm pulling you know I'm, and i'm predicting that thunder talk you know upsetting over rng so yeah i think thunder talk is probably going to be the lowest owned um with kill upside that i actually think could win you know here on the chinese uh, amongst the Chinese games, obviously Ultra Prime being being the biggest underdog, you know, is gonna be the lowest owned. But I just don't think they're gonna be able to win against EDG. So I'm gonna go with Thunder Talk as a good play today for GPP. The next matchup, as mentioned, EDG being the biggest favorite at minus 1600 over Ultra Prime, who is a big big underdog at plus 750. Over under combined kills per minute. They're all pretty good, um, kind of similar to the Thunder Talk RNG matchup, but EDG, you know, uh, having these really high odds, strong odds of winning is supported by those metrics that I look at, jungle control, lane control. All these metrics you see on the screen do favor EDG. I just don't see how EDG not win this series. I can definitely see like they slack off, they experiment something with the champions and and the compositions and combinations. I think they definitely have a you know have potential to drop drop a game. And EDG is gonna be so popular on this slate that you know it it's not that it's not really a bad idea um to fade them in your lineups, hoping for a low kill game or hoping they drop a game in the series. And the metrics, yeah, I mean, they're not like, I mean, EDG is better, don't get me wrong, but they're not like spectacularly better. Like they're not that much different, vastly different. I mean, you see plus 4.6% at jungle control percentage. Like you saw last night, if you watch my video last night for Gen G and D, D plus Kia, I mean, there are much, much bigger, you know, jungle control percentages that we've seen and goal spend percentage difference. So, I mean, you know, it, it is possible that Ultra Prime can take a game off in the series. Um, so we'll see. But, you know, I, I do think they should still win 2-0 to zero as long as they still, you know, uh, perform as they have been, you know, in the last couple of weeks. The next matchup in China is JDG versus Top Esports. This is the marquee matchup of the day of the night depends on where you are watching it from uh jdg is a slight favorite at minus 150 and they should be in my opinion uh looking at the rosters and then top esports at plus 115 um i'll show you the rosters that they're starting with uh this is the ultra prime one let me see the there you go so personally um just looking at the rosters after what I've watched the last couple months, Tian actually has been pretty poor, in my opinion, just compared to his expect expectations and his performance last year. Um, you know, he won an MVP last year at some point in one of the splits, I believe. Um, and he has his level of play, quality of play has come down. Uh, whereas Kanavi's quality of play, where he was amazing last year, but also this year he has continued. Um, being probably the top jungler in, in the LPL. Um, and then Knight over Rookie. I mean, I think that's kind of a wash. I think Rookie has been pretty solid, and so has Knight. I mean, Knight been really, really good. And 
But really, the bottom lane is where I put all my eyes on because, you know, Ruler coming over from Korea has been playing pretty well. And he's been playing. I mean, there were a couple games where I think he had some communication issues or synergy issues with the team, just being a new member of the team to struggle in team fights, certain team fights. But, you know, you saw his you see his like individual mechanics and also individual mechanics around um the team fights when he is being targeted by the other team and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, I think, I think ruler, as long as he performs at the high level, I mean, he doesn't have to hit a ceiling in terms of quality of playing. I think, you know, JDG should have an advantage in the bottom lane. I think Jackie love and Mark have a better synergy between them two, but I just think ruler is a better AD carry overall. But in the bottom and the top lane is where I have a little concerns about 369 has been, for me at least, has been very disappointing. Um, he hasn't been as good as the rest of his teammates. But on the other hand, for top esports, you see you've seen Cheng Tian just dominate in the top lane. And I think he's such an aggressive top laner. I think he may give some uh problems uh against 369. So as long as Cheng Tian does not get out of control and just snowballs and puts lane pressure on uh 369, I think JDG should win this matchup. <laughs> but that's that's one area I'm a little concerned about that 369 hasn't really shown me anything to the contrary. I think Cheng Tian will be able to kind of di dictate that lane pressure. Um, but I believe in Kanavi, and as you guys know, I think the jungle jungle uh, player and position is more important than the value uh, set in the top lane that I just talked about. So Kanavi over Tian, and also the metrics that I just pointed out, um, jungle control percentage, lane control percentage, all of these favor JDG. I think Topsy Esports, the roster and the name value carry a lot for them as well, just like I talked about for RNG in the earlier matchup. Um, I do think JDG should win this matchup. I'm going to go as far as saying JDG wins 2-0, to zero, hoping that Kanavi kind of mitigates the differences in the top lane, and he will. I mean, he knows what's going on there. And and, and I think Ruler and Missing will actually follow through and come through against Jackie Love and Mark. All right, and the LCK, we have two games, a uh, little more lopsided. Um, so let's talk about T1 versus KT. Um, T1, you know, the usual suspects, the five players from last year, uh, gelling together, playing very well. But KT is no joke, their, their opponent, right? Like KT has been the top five or top four team in the LCK. Um, KT actually has been very good um, in terms of, um, early game and mid game and late game as well. I mean, they just been really good, but they're, I mean, but they haven't, but they're not as good as T1, but they're actually a good team still. So like they have the capacity and capability to be able to pull off an upset against T1, but will they do that just based on given T1's recent form? Um, I don't think so. I think T1 should still win this two, two to one. I think KT can take a game off in the series a lot of people, I think, will flock to T1 um, just after seeing what happened. But KT, like I said, I mean, they are a really good team. I think T I think KT can pull a game off in the series, but um, ultimately, I'm going to have to side with T1. Um, you see the metrics, uh, uh, like, slightly favoring T1. So, I mean, I think T1 should win this. But in terms of kill upside, yeah, I mean, this is pretty good. Better The better one... Uh, than the next LCK matchup that I'll talk about. So T1 is definitely in play and KT is definitely in play as well. But KT plays a little bit slower um, on the slower side at 0 0.60 combined kills per minute metric for them. So I don't know if that, you know, I think, I think that actually makes KT not as good of a GPP play that I just mentioned. So I'm probably going to focus on T1 if I, want to differentiate my lineups and maybe playing one-offs with Zeus in the top lane or, you know, uh, Kumayushi or something, something like that. So I think that could, that could fly definitely for sure. And then the next last, next and last matchup of the slate is Nongshim Red Force versus Live Sandbox. 
As mentioned before, NS has been one of the worst teams probably in Asia, like not just in Korea, not just in, you know, uh, in the LCK, but I just feel like overall they've been really bad, really poor. Um, but Sandbox, on the other hand, has been playing pretty well. I mean, given their roster, I then we nobody really expected Sandbox to play this well. Uh, and they actually had a pretty good shot at upsetting um um in the last se in their last series. But yeah, I mean I think this should be a lopsided matchup. Um I think I'm more confident in Sandbox beating Nongchim Red Force than T one T one beating KT that I just talked about. And and the odds agree with me as well. I mean, you see the jungle control and lane control, all these metrics favoring sandbox and also sandbox, um the jungle difference is real. So um but this matchup actually has one of the lowest well, it has the lowest kills total kills over under and combined kills per minute. So, you know, I mean I think I would fade both of them or maybe use one off or just, you know, use sandbox and the team slot to kind of vary your lineup. But um but you never know. Like right, you saw this morning, uh, you know, this morning slate that Damon Key D plus Kia had one of the lowest kill upside in that matchup, but they still ended up being the highest <laughs> scoring stack. So it could happen, obviously, but it's probability wise, I think, you know, this is gonna be the lowest kill upside matchup. So anyway, so I hope you guys like the video. Um this I'm recording a little bit earlier today because uh, I feel like yesterday I posted a little too late. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please, please hit the like button below. Um, it would mean a lot. Again, uh, thank you for watching and good luck out there. Have a good one. Bye-bye.